Well, howdy folks, welcome back to the shop. So today I have an interesting job that I need to finish completing here. So I already machined one of these uh, just to kind of get my processes and everything how I was gonna machine the next one here. So this is the first one here I machined. So this is an axle adapter. Uh, unfortunately, I can't really tell you a whole lot about it, but this material is 4140 heat treated. Um, it, you can tell it turned out really nice. Uh, it turned really nice on the lathe. And uh, whenever I put it in mill, it turned out really nice uh but <clears throat> so there it is and the final weight of this here is 11 pounds eight ounces so what we machined that first one out of is the same size block as this here so this is and you can see where's my tape measure here you can see it's a little bit over seven inches and it's one and three quarter inches thick so the final dimensions are seven inches exactly and it is one and five eighths inches thick. So we got quite a bit of material to take off of this. But like I said, this is 19 pounds, 5.4 ounces. So there's quite a bit of material that we got to take out of this to get this other one, same as that one there. Um, so whenever you order blocks of steel like this, is you give them the dimensions you want and they usually have it oversized. So this OD on this is almost seven and a 16th, something like that. So there's very little that's got to come off on the outside. And then they give me, like I said, it's inch and three quarter and I need inch and five eighths. So with that said, guys, um, I wish I could tell you more about what this actually goes to, but I really can't. So with that said, why don't we get over to the lathe, get everything set up here and let's start cutting this out. All right. So I already had the jaws kind of roughly to size here. So we're just going to go ahead and put that in and get it clamped in. I checked with the square and this side here is the, it's the most square compared to this side here so um, I'm just pushing it tight up against the jaws on the back and then let's get our dial indicator on it and get it indicated in and like I said you know we got a 16th to play with so we don't have to go crazy accurate here and plus with this being kind of scaly steel doesn't really matter so all we're doing is tightening the highs and loosening the lows okay that side looks pretty good that side looks pretty good and uh, just make sure all the jaws are tight and uh, we'll start cutting all right so I was just curious what we're actually cutting so right there's all we're hitting there and we're hitting there so we got uh, quite a bit here, so we'll try to take uh, maybe a little heavier cut. That sounds a little bit better. Okay, so yes, yeah, so we're hitting all the way from here to here now, and the same from here to here. So we're getting there. Okay, so we're good the whole way around except for right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a quick measurement and make sure that we're not gonna go too far under our seven inches and uh, see what we look like here. It's kind of hard, but uh, I am 30 thousandths over seven inches. So we got 30 thousandths we can take off yet. So we're gonna take 20 and then do a 10 thousandths finish pass. I just want a quick uh, verification here. It's definitely cleaned up the whole way around. And it looks like nine thousandths, but so we'll go ahead and take the nine and uh, we're good. And there we go. Okay, so all I did was take the same cutter and I just reversed it in here and then kind of squared this roughly back up. So now we can get the uh, face cut here. <clears throat> we'll go ahead and touch off. We'll go ahead and set this zero. And I don't know. We'll take light cuts just to see how it's going to do. And uh, here we go. And 
and there you go you can kind of see how out of square this end here was so we're going to go in a few thousandths there and let's cut her again All right, so we don't have a whole lot more here to take off. All right, so that was final pass there. So all we're gonna do is Come back and we're just going to break this corner with the same bit here. That's good right there. All right, so let's get the uh, boring bars and stuff set up and we'll start cutting this in. So the first recess on this side here is an eighth inch deep and I believe it's 6.27 inches in diameter. So let me get that set up and let's uh, we'll get back to it. All right, so we need an eighth inch uh, depth here. So I'm just gonna use a, um, a center drill here and get my point in. So what it is, is it's one revolution on my tailstock is 125 thousandths. Okay. <clears throat> so next I'm gonna get an end mill and then we'll chuck it in the jaws here and then we'll plunge in another 125 thousandths again. Same exact thing. All right, so I just got a regular half inch end mill. It's a center cutting end mill, and we'll just do the same thing. We'll plunge in. So one revolution, like I said, is 125 thousandths. And we're gonna leave five thousandths on the bottom as a cleanup, so we should be right there. might be hard to see but you can still see the dimple in there but that's exactly what I wanted so all right I'm gonna get the boring bar set up here and then let's uh, start boring this out all right so I got this little boring bar in here I'm curious to see how well it does um, I never actually used this guy yet so I'm kind of curious to see how he does so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this guy and just take him right up to the surface there and just touch it and then we'll set our zero down here and then we'll start cutting actually I don't really care for how that's cutting so I think I'm gonna switch over to another cutter here like so I didn't really care how this one here is cutting so we're just gonna go ahead and take him out and we're gonna go over to my bigger boring bar here and we're gonna do the same thing is uh, run it over here just lightly touch it, then we'll run this guy up to my zero, just right there, and then uh, we'll start plunging in. All right, so since I got it plunged into the 125, I'm gonna take this now and set it back to my zero. And then we'll just keep working it out. All right, I want to stop here and kind of show you something because some of you may be wondering is, you might be wondering why I'm not feeding in this direction. Well, I'll show you why. And if you look at the boring bars, you see the cutting edge is here. There's no real cutting edge here other than the point. So it, you can't really drive this way. Um, they do make different styles of boring bar cutters to you know, cut this way. Unfortunately, I don't have one other than that little guy that I have. Um, so that's why I'm plunging in from this side. So I'm hitting this cutting edge here. So you just keep plunging in, keep plunging in, and that's what uh, gives you your cut there.
right, so we're going to stop there and let's see if we can get a measurement here. Um, and uh, I believe this dimension here is supposed to be 1.627. And we are 5.925. So we still got a few, uh, few thousands to take off here. All right, so we got this here to size. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go all the way back to center there, kind of just clean up the surface here. And there you go, that's part of it's done. So the only other thing we're gonna do real quick, since we have it all set up here, is we are going to put the this cutter in here and we are going to do a chamfer on that uh you know break the corners on this something like that all right so well this side here is completely done um it actually looks pretty decent i'm very happy with the way it turned out so let's get it out of the lathe here let's flip it over and let's start cutting on the other side all right, so we got everything flipped around and you see I put copper shims in here to keep it from marring up the surface here. So all we're gonna do right now is we're gonna try to blend this in real quick. All right, so whenever I get close like this, um, I actually like to reverse it and then uh, we'll work in. And just just touch that surface and work out. I'm gonna see what it looks like. And there you go. I can barely feel the transition at all. So whenever I put some sandpaper on that, it'll clear that up. So, all right. Next thing we're gonna do is get this to size, as in thickness-wise. Okay, so I got everything set up here to start cutting on the face here. So our dimension we're looking for is 1.625 and we are at 1.73. That's roughly a hundred thousandths. So uh, we'll try to take 25 at the time, maybe see how it does. Kind of looks like I need to speed it up just a nudge. going to take quick measure just because yeah it's 1.702 all right we got 50 thousands to come off so here's another 25 For some reason i can't get it to chip break very well Where are we at number wise here and we're at 629 with that let's get the uh micrometers out here and get a real measurement yeah we got only like five thousandths to take off according to this yep five thousandths which is pretty good so let's dial in our five and uh, let's go for it. All right, let's see if we hit the hit our number here. We are two thousandths over according to this, which is actually within tolerance. Cutting the thickness is done. The only thing we're going to do quick, since we have his cutter in here, is uh, break his corner. And there you go. All right, so next thing we're going to do is get everything set up to do the boring. Um, we may end up just trying to use the end mill in here and plunge it into our depth. 
um, but I'll get everything set up and I'll bring you right back. All right, so we're gonna do the same thing we did with the other side. So we're gonna use a, a half inch end mill. I'm gonna try not doing a, a pilot hole and see if we can just plunge this in here. So the depth we need is 0.875. It should be uh, seven turns on this. All right, let's check our depth here. And 875, right on the nose. All right, so let's get the boring bar set up and start plunging in here. We better get a dimension here because uh, <clears throat> we've got to be getting close to size here. So we are really, really close to size. So I think what I'm going to do is let everything cool down and then uh, we'll get a measurement on everything and I'll bring you back and we'll put the chamfers and finish up the bottom there and start going over to the mill. All right, guys. So... I took this piece out of the lathe. Um, actually, I went ahead and deburred it and uh, all that, so that's why you see the chamfer here and the deburring here. But whenever I had it over the lathe, it was my fault for not uh, double checking and keep checking on my dimensions here. So this dimension in here is actually a little bit oversized. Uh, it's still within tolerance, but it is my fault for not uh, checking it and then checking it, you know, doing a light cut and checking it. But anyway, like I said, it's still intolerant, so we're gonna go ahead and move to the next step. And what that is, is we got to put, it's actually nine holes in here. Uh, three of them are through holes, so there's going to be a three bolt pattern. Uh, you remember seeing the other one there? Um, and then we're going to put the six bolt pattern in. So here's the uh, other one that we did. So we got our three holes here, and then we got our six out here. However, uh, what I am going to do is, if you can see, it's hard to tell maybe in the camera here but there's a, a, a dimple there so basically I spotted six holes in in case something happens and I have to come back and put these extra holes in um, but right now the plan is, is just to have these three but anyway so with that said why don't we get our coaxial indicator in there and get this uh, centered up and we'll uh, start getting our holes drilled all right, so here's our coaxial indicator, and all we're gonna do is put him in, you know, and we're gonna tighten him up up top here. And we don't have to go crazy tight, I just usually snug it up up on top here. And then we'll just take this and lower this down in, push this, and then we'll get in there. All right, so some people don't like to run them at low speed. Um, I feel if you're fairly close, it doesn't really matter. Uh, so I usually run it at a low speed, and I'll show you. So what we do is you can see how it's fluctuating. So all we're gonna do is turn X and Y until we get it to as little as little movement as possible. And all I'm doing is adjusting it to where the needle barely moves. And it's hard to do, or hard to get them in, but look right there. It looks like there's a spot, maybe a rough spot there, that's making it jitter a little bit, but you can see it's pretty much there. I'm not sure why that little jitter's in there, but you can tell, I mean, it's pretty much dead on right now, so we can stop. And then what we'll do is we will set our digital readout to zero. So up here, we'll just zero X, enter and zero Y, enter. All right, so now the mill is perfectly centered to this hole here that we need to start boring. So now we'll get the digital readout here set up to drill the bolt circle. All right, so since we got everything zeroed out, we can do our bolt definition. So if we hit our bolt definition up here, okay, we put in number of the holes we want, and this is already 
uh, saved in here from the previous one I did. So, so we'll hit enter, six holes, center to center. We want zero. And then we do half of the diameter, so uh, it was like 4.75 or something. I'd have to look exactly, but it is uh, half of it is 2.3750 for the radius. And then we this is your start angle, and you can set it to, you know, if you want it to start to hole off one direction or the other, which the other set of holes are going to be 30 degrees off. So we'll do that in a bit. So after that, since we're set at zero, we hit bolt use. It'll tell us hole number one, and then all we do is crank this guy to zero. And then that is where our first hole is ready to go. All right, and there's where our first hole is going to go. You can see I already have the spotting drill in, so we're basically ready to spot these in. So there's our first one. So we hit our bolt use again, hole two. And we do the same thing. We crank to zero. And then there's where our next hole goes. And then all we do is keep on repeating. Hole three. Hole four. All right, and you, so you can see it's relatively easy with the digital readout. So we got all six holes spotted in. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is get a, uh, another drill bit in and we're gonna punch these all the way through. All right, so I got a pilot drill in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all these six holes drilled all the way through. It's the same process as before. We're using the digital readout. All we do is hit the next hole, hit the next hole and hit the next hole. So, all right, let's add it. All right, I don't know if you uh, you had caught that, but um, this actually wasn't one of the holes that I wanted to drill whole way through. <clears throat> Remember, I said I only needed to drill three of them. I mean, it's okay. It didn't. I didn't screw anything up yet. So what I'm I'm just going to drill the opposite holes. I meant to drill this one, this one, and this one. Uh, so instead, I'm going to drill this one, this one, and this one. So instead of just going to hole one, we're just going to go to hole two, which should be yeah, straight across. All right, so we got all the pilot holes drilled in. All right, let me get this cleaned up and let's see what we can do here. All right, so what we're gonna do, since I'm gonna drill these uh, on the drill press on the opposite side or put it back in here, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do. What I am gonna do now is go ahead and get these other six holes spotted in. So I already got the spotting drill in. And what we have to do is program it basically the same way, except for the bolt circle is 5.91. So half of that's going to be 2.955. So what we're going to do is bolt definition, holes, six, enter, enter. All right, and this is 2.95. So 2.955, oh, it's 2.955, enter, start angle. And this is where I said that we were going to set this one off. So this one's going to be 30 degrees, enter. All right, so now we're ready to go ahead and start spotting these other ones in. So bolt use. So all we're going to do, again, is just crank these till zero, and we're ready to spot. All right, and you can see, wipe that off a little bit, you can see these bolt holes are right in between these two, which is exactly what we wanted. So that's your 30 degrees offset. 
All right, so let's get the uh, other drill bit in. I'm gonna run a pilot down through, and these holes don't get all drilled all the way through. I think it's one and seven sixteenths deep. Uh, I'll confirm it, and then we'll start drilling those in. All right, so we got everything set up here with the pilot drill. Um, so these get drilled to one and seven sixteenths deep. So if you're wondering how I do that, let me back you up here and I'll show you. So on the front, I makeshifted a dial caliper to put here for my depth and it's been it works actually really well um so what i did is basically run it down to a touch as this surface here and then just zero it out and all we do is just drive it down until we hit uh, 1.4375 and then we stop so whenever i hit that depth i'll probably set it to zero again that way i just plow into a hit zero all right with that said why don't we uh, get started here Okay, so we got our drill bit in there for the tap that's in there, and that tap is M12 by 1.75 thread. Um, so let's get her drilled. Right, so the next thing we're going to do here is we are going to go ahead and chamfer each one of these real quick. Uh, shouldn't take long. All right, so the next thing we've got to do is get these all tapped. And uh, like I said, it's an M12 by 1.75 thread. So we're all ready to do that. I'm going to change the uh, bit here and we'll start tapping. All right, so I'm not power tapping these. Um, sometimes you can, I'm just not going to. So what I did is I put my spring center in here. So all we're gonna use is this as a guide for uh, manually tapping it, so. All right, so we got all these drilled or, or got all these tapped. Um, I still got to run a bottom tap down through all these here, but I'm going to do that off camera. So what I'm going to do is take this out. I'm going to get everything kind of prepped and ready and finished tapped. And then I'll bring you back and we'll start cutting the, I called them the Mickey Mouse ears. It's kind of what it looks like to me. All right. So hang tight. All right, guys. So we are getting ready to cut these in here now. So I already went over to the drill press and I already drilled these to this size. So what I did or how I did it before was I put it in my rotary table here. So what I end up doing is making like an alignment pin. So what happens is this guy sits in here and that's my alignment pin. And then it goes into the center of the rotary table here. Um, <clears throat> on the other one, let me grab the other one here. Whenever I cut these ones in, I, I did it on the rotary table because I tried using a boring bar with the boring head and slowly taking in and out. And I just had an extremely hard time. Whenever I put it in the rotary table, it was a lot less time um, and it, it turned out really great. So that's what I'm going to do again for this one here. So the first thing we need to do is get our rotary table set to zero. So I already got my uh, coaxial indicator in here and we're ready to get it uh, dialed into zero. So we'll go ahead and turn it on and just keep turning it until it basically stops moving. And there we go. You can see it's very, very little out. And there you go. It's not even moving at all. So then what we'll do is we'll zero our uh, digital readout like we did before. And now this is perfectly centered to that. So let's go ahead and get everything clamped in and let's start getting these uh, Mickey Mouse ears cut out. All right, so here's what I was meaning. So here's the alignment pin. We're gonna go ahead and just set that down in here. You can tell it's a tight fit. I machined it fairly tight. And then, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to lay this and align it right on that hole. Just like that. Next thing we're going to do is put all of our clamps in here. And get her tightened down and we're pretty much ready to start cutting. So what we're going to do next is uh, we'll go ahead and get our bit in. We're just going to use a half inch end mill. I'm not sure how I want to do this if I just want to try to plunge down into it and then 
go from there or if I want to take a little piece, a little piece, I'm not sure. So let's, uh, maybe we'll try plunging it. All right, so uh, you might be wondering why I was doing a climb mill on the end there, and the main reason is that you get a better finish. So I only have about five thousandths to come out of this. So we're gonna drop to the bottom here and kind of uh, just scratch the bottom and then do our finish passes here, right there. So you can see in there that the finish is really nice. Um, we just scratch the bottom. In fact, you can't even feel a, a line there. So there's only one left thing there here to do, and that is to deburr this here. So what I'm using is one of these bits. It's just a chamfer bit. And we'll set it right there is about good. And then we'll uh, turn it on. And what I'm gonna do is try to match the chamfers here. And I don't know if you can uh, see it over here, but that chamfer, let me get this out of the way. You can see that that chamfer matches that chamfer pretty close. That's all we were going for, it's fairly close. So, with that said, all I gotta do is move it to these two and do the exact same process. I may do that off the camera because it does take a while. I uh, may catch a little clips here and there of it uh, just so you can kind of see it. But uh, yeah, so let me get everything set up on that and let's get that one done. Alright guys, that was the final cut on this, so we're pretty much done. The only thing I got to do is take it out and deburr some of these corners in here and here and stuff. But other than that, this project's almost done. Alright guys, so this in here is the one we just got off the mill. And all I did was take it over and deburr it. So some of these edges in here were a little bit sharp, and then I deburred all these holes. And then just basically gave it a clean up, uh, just with some brake cleaner, and then I did wash it. Um, and you can see it turned out really nice. I was uh, very happy with the way this turned out. You know, the backside, everything, it really looks great. Uh, the only mix up that I had, and it was merely not my fault, is whenever I cut this inner diameter here, I went a little oversized. It's still within tolerance, but you know, it's my mess up. But if you remember in the beginning of the video, I believe this block weighed 19 pounds and somewhat ounces. So what I was gonna show you is how much it weighs now. And 11 pounds, seven ounces. So, and it's dropping a little bit, so it's 11.68 right now. Probably the scales settle on in. But there you go, so that's how much material was removed. It was quite a bit of material that you remove out of these to get you know, the final product from 19 pounds to 11 pounds, uh, seven ounces or whatever it was. You know, that's quite a bit of material. So this, remember again, this is uh, 4140. And then whenever I ordered it, you can either select the kneeled or heat treat. I went with the heat treat. Um, you know, all these holes here were bottom tapped or M12 by 1.75. So with that said, guys, this project's done. I uh, hope you enjoyed going through the process and maybe learned something along the way. So with that said, guys, please hit that like and su subscribe button if you can. And until next time, take care.